One of my wife's favorite things to do at Christmas time is to watch cheesy Christmas romance movies and I really don't mind because you can actually learn a lot about what not to do in filmmaking by watching these. So we were watching right before Christmas and I just had to share with you how bad this part was. Movement is a huge part of storytelling but they got it so wrong here. See here how we were initially sliding left to right? Now wait for it. And now we're sliding right to left. But wait, it's not over the camera stops and starts sliding right again. Are you kidding me? There's absolutely no motivation behind this camera movement. And you can see how someone just threw the camera on a motorized slider, had it automatically moving back and forth throughout the take. So let's look at some camera movements that actually make sense. Hey everyone, Cambry here showing you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if you're new, consider subscribing. And when it comes to camera movement, there doesn't always have to be some profound reason to be moving the camera a certain way, but there are times when certain movements do make sense. And this wasn't just one isolated, unmotivated movement in this film. Again, here in another conversation, we have the camera moving left to right, and then a few close-up shots, and then randomly moving back from right to left in the next shot, then another couple of close-ups, and then what do you know? Back to sliding the opposite direction again. I just can't believe how bad this was. It's like they're about to start shooting and someone said, wait, we need to put some movement in this shot to make it more cinematic. And then someone else said, okay, let's just set up this motorized slider on a loop and that'll give us really cinematic footage. So let's see some actual good camera movement examples in films that complements what's happening in the scene. Just right that <laughs> This will all be over. Here in Catch Me If You Can, Frank just found out that his parents are getting divorced, and he's being told that he has to decide who to live with. We see a push in on him to show that his world is closing in on him. It's not a test. We see a similar push in where Andrew realizes that the music director set him up to look bad by announcing they were going to play a different song than what he had told Andrew to prepare for. Upswinging. And this is a great way to emphasize when a character comes to some kind of realization. And again, here in Star Trek Discovery, when the crew ends up in an alternate reality where they find out that everything they previously knew was destroyed. No. And another common time that a push-in is used in films is to emphasize a certain line that a character says. Like you can see here in Men in Black. Let's put it on. Put what on? The last suit you'll ever wear. And then we see it again after he puts the suit on. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. So now let's look at how moving the camera backwards away from the subject can change the mood. In the end of Jobs, Steve Jobs fires Markula, and as he leaves the room, the camera moves backwards as he walks away, emphasizing how he's now been kicked out of the group. So. And here in Downsizing, as they say goodbye before the procedure starts, the camera moves away from the wife, giving a feeling that he's leaving and won't see her again, which is confirmed later on when he finds out that she didn't go through with it. And here in the post, when this reporter reveals the company might be at risk of being shut down because of his source for the controversial story, the camera slides backward to show how he now feels isolated from everyone. So you see that camera movement can be very powerful, and all of these camera movements have some sort of motivated reason to help move the story along. So let me know down in the comments what some of your favorite camera moves are. But now, let's look at a few camera movement combinations used in films. But I guess I wouldn't publish. And back here in the post, Meryl Streep's character has some people telling her to publish a controversial story and others saying not to because it could cause the company to be shut down. The camera slowly moves in on her, showing the increasing pressure she's feeling until she finally makes a decision. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's then, go, as if it's go, now out of her go. hands, the camera moves back and upward, giving a sense of helplessness. In the beginning of Forrest Gump, we get a slow push in on him as he begins to tell his story until we are so close that it's almost like we're moving inside his thoughts to see his memory. Mama said they'd take me anywhere. And then we have a match cut to a young Forrest Gump with a slide backward to reveal what he's talking about when he began telling his story now that we're in his memory. But you may be thinking, all these camera movements you're showing are either forward or backward and the examples in the beginning that you said were bad were all sideways sliding shots. 
Well, fair enough. So now let's look at a couple more examples of some good sideways sliding shots to help move the story along. Here in Clone Wars, we have Darth Maul trying to convince the Jedi Ahsoka that her ideals are wrong. We see a sliding movement across the 180 degree line to emphasize the fact that her mind has been changed. I will help you. And here in my short film Bedtime, I used a slow sliding right move by this pillar as a way to show the passing of time from the start of the movie Frozen to a point about halfway through. And a lot of times a slide sideways like this can be an effective tool to reveal something. However, you want to do it in a way that makes sense. Unlike the way that it's used here, once again and right before Christmas, we have a slide right to reveal a party, then a quick push in of the people, and then another slide left revealing the party again. The first slide would have been good, but the second sliding reveal from the other side doesn't make much sense because the party's already been revealed. So the big takeaway here is that camera movement can be a really powerful thing, but you don't want to move the camera just for the sake of moving it. You want to try to think of what kind of camera moves can help emphasize what you're trying to get across so that you have some kind of motivation behind it. But if this video was helpful, then please help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.